Greetings, here's a guy with a Danish accent. I made a nerd level YouTube button that shows the current number of subscribers on my channel. This project is based on the work of Bitluni and Brian Lau. A big shout out to them. See links to their channels in the descriptions below. The design is updated with an ESP32, a speaker, DC to DC converter, a multi-level status indicator and a light sensor to adjust the LED light level. That's a special tune when you gain a subscriber. And one when you lose one. Please help me gain some more. Thereby you support the channel and make me want to make more content. And please fill my lap with sounds from a crazy bus driver in the Himalayan mountains. A special greeting to Bitluni. Yes, you fanboys know what I mean. This pink LED is blinking when the data is being fetched from YouTube. Here I will show you how I made the display. The main building block is of course this 64 by 64 pixel LED matrix. 4096 RGB LEDs in total. I think it looks amazing. The panel is controlled by a HOP75 interface and it's powered from this 4-pin Molex connector. Everything on this panel is 5V logic and 5V power. The panel is controlled from a PCB that I made in KiCad. It fits directly on top of the panel and it's connected via this 16-pin female connector here on the back side. The panel is powered from an 8 to 24 volt external power source. Over here we have a DC to DC converter that will generate 5 volt, max 5 amps for the panel. Four power wires are connected to this terminal block and fed into the panel via this cutout in the PCB. The panel is controlled from an ESP32 room module. The 3.3 volts for the ESP32 is generated by this LDO. Here is a 6 pin standard programming header, and I normally use the ESP proc from ESPCIF. Over here uh, you see an LDR and a few resistors that will convert uh, ambient light into a voltage that are fed into an analog port here on the ESP32. This section is an uh, audio interface. In the 10-pin connector we have an I2S port and power. This small PCB holds an audio DAC and a 1 watt Class D speaker driver. The terminal block is connected to um, a speaker that has already been glued into this um, 3D printed cover. Here we see some holes for hanging the device on the wall. We have a hole for the programmer and a hole for the DC power coming in. Finally we have a small hole for the LDR here on the side. These eight posts um, um, we'll together with some screws fix the cover to the panel. Let's try and assemble the device.
wanted to make a second copy of the display and I bought some new panels. A few moments later. Everything was good, I thought. But look. This is perfect. This is the old panel. This is the new panel. And of course, they changed the locations of the connectors. Isn't that just typical? <clears throat> Houston, we have a problem. Here you see the details of the I2S audio breakout board connected to a speaker. It's easy to add new sounds to the system. I will show you how to do it. I'll just show you how you can include some of your own tunes into this framework. One of the most important things is that you select the right sample rate for your tune. So in this example we use 16 kHz. Let's try and find some tunes. Here we have some different bells. Let's try and listen to this one. Alright, let's download it. And we see here that we can download it in MP3 format. So if we go to this folder, we will see that we have an MP3 file. And uh, we need to have that in a WAV format. So we can use this program called Order City. And here we can import the MP3 file. So we select import audio and our bells. And here we see the waveform for the tune. Let's try and listen to it again. And um, we see down here that it has a sample rate of 44.1 kHz. So we need to resample this. So we select 16 kHz, then we select tracks, mix, and mix and render, like that. So now we have it in 16 kHz format. And then we want to export it and we want to export it as a WAV file and we have a file name and uh, it's Microsoft WAV format and it's unsigned 8-bit PCM and we select save and this is just ok like that and here we see we have our WAV file but in order for the Arduino compiler to include it, we need to save it as an include file. And um, we have this hex editor that can help us with that. So we just say file open and the WAV file. And here we see a lot of data. A neat feature is that we can export it as a C file from here. Um, so we just need to select all and we can say copy as C. So if we go back to our Arduino IDE, we can just make a new file, new tab, and we call it bells.h. And here we can insert. our data and as we see there's a lot of it and here in the top we can just give it another name we can call it, just call it cell data like that and like that. 
quite simple. Go ahead and make your own. I hope you got some inspiration. Please share your comments. Please consider subscribing to my channel and fill my room with loud indie bus tunes. Bye.